my name is Brooke McGinnis. I'm Amanda Holcomb. And welcome back to another edition of WMA's Brunch and Learn. Today we are going to take you through a piece in our permanent collection called River Bend by artist Scott Stevens. And then Amanda is going to take you outside and work on a piece that was inspired by the artwork. So a little bit about the artist first. Scott Stevens is a professor of art and a chair of the art department at the University of Montevallo, which is up in the Birmingham area. Uh, his studio practice is in large format printmaking, uh, which is appropriate because this piece is quite large. It's hard to tell online, but it's a big piece. Um, and then he also works in historic photo processes, which is important to remember for later. All right, so put that away in your, your mental warehouse. Um, his inspirations are how nature is used um, and how we um, as artists recreate nature and how our recreation kind of changes the concept of what nature is or what it looks like. Um, so this work is called Riverbend, okay? So just by the title, I think we can assume that we are looking at some sort of river, but is this work more abstract or is it more realistic? One of the really interesting things about this piece is that in a way it's kind of like Monet's work and that the closer you are, the more abstract it looks and the farther away you move, then the picture really comes into detail. Um, again, that kind of experience is hard to capture digitally, um, but I would always ask students on tour to kind of step up as close as they could without touching um, and then scoot back and see like the whole picture kind of um, take form. Um, so I would ask them, where is this? What is this? And the answers that I would always get are, it's ice, right? And it looks icy. And I think a lot of that is because of the cool color palette that's used. And also some of those drips down do kind of look like icicles, or even if you've ever seen a frozen river, sometimes it will freeze as it's in motion and you get that look of all that kind of ice and movement. Um, but Fun fact, this is actually a real river that exists. It's the Sipsi River, located in northern Alabama. Now, I have only lived in Alabama for three years, but it has never been cold enough here for a river to ice over. <laughs> not to say that it's never happened, but since I've been here, it just doesn't happen. So it's actually not meant to be icy. The reason that it looks icy is because of that color palette, the blues, the whites, and that color palette um, is created because of the type of artwork it is. This is a cyanotype, which is a big name, right? <laughs> big crazy word. Um, and cyan, C-Y-A-N, is another word for blue. So if you've ever gotten one of those really great packs of crayons, like the 64 pack with like the crayon sharpener, right? Every, yeah, there's a cyan crayon in there. And if you've ever dealt with like a copy machine, um, <laughs> then the actual blue toner cartridge is also named cyan. So that cyan comes from the name blue. Now, as far as the process, I'm gonna turn that over to Miss Amanda because even though photography is actually one of my pursuits, the whole process seems like magic and wizardry to me. So I'm gonna let Amanda explain that. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, even though I have uh, learned from a professional artist how to do cyanotypes, um, photography as a whole really does feel like a whole magical process. Uh, I feel like there should be wands involved. Just, you know, it, it is very magical. But with cyanotypes, it is one of the oldest photographic processes that's around. And if you are familiar with the history of photography, it initially started off black and white, and it would be a very long exposure. Now, we today, and I am right there with you, mainly take photographs with our phone. So when I say exposure, when you're taking a photo, it mimics um, uh, something called a shutter. So if you take a photo and you see the screen kind of uh, shrink down where it goes black for just a millisecond and then goes back, that's the shutter. And what it's doing is that it's stopping the light from coming through. Now, cyanotypes are really great because you're, if your favorite color is blue like mine is, it's the perfect process for you because the whole thing is going to be blue. And it's the monochromatic, so different shades of blue, so whites and blue, so on. Now, when we expose our photograph or our prints, we're actually using the sun. We won't be using any other chemicals than what is treated on the paper. Now, to talk about that a little bit, there are a couple different ways that you can create a cyanotype. It is also known as a sun print, and you can still buy those kits in the store. You can order them online, and we're um, using Jacquard cyanotype, and it comes with 
two different um, chemicals and you have to mix equal parts of these chemicals together to create your solution. And all we have to do, it comes to you as a dry powder, it costs about $10 to get this set. And all you have to do is fill it up with water, shake it, let it sit for a day. And it comes in um, black bottles that keep the light out. So they'll be good for a few um, months until you do use all of them. So it's really great. Now with this, again, you just mix equal parts you brush it on your paper and you just let that dry in a dark space. So for me, I'm just using my bathroom because there's no windows in there. So uh, I don't have to worry about the sun and getting it. Now, even here in my living room, I have the blinds closed. There are no lights on. So there's a lot of light getting into this space. So I wouldn't want to prep my paper in here during the day. You again, just want to, if you are doing the traditional cyanotype, when you're brushing your chemicals on, do it in a dark space. Now you can use an artificial light like a lamp, but the sunlight again is what is going to develop your photograph. Now when I'm talking about developing a photograph, there are a couple different things that you can do with your cyanotypes. You can use found objects, you can use plants, or Jacquard's really great. They on their website, they actually have it where you can take any photograph and they'll turn it into a traditional negative. And you can print that out on a transparency. So here I have uh, an example here. So you can, let me put up a white piece of paper behind it. There you go. So there is an Italian lion sculpture with a pigeon on its head, took during my study abroad um, months. And it's really hard to see because it's a negative. So if you do have a phone and you uh, triple click that home button, a lot of times it will invert your like what you're seeing so the colors look really wonky, that's a negative. So a negative inverts the colors and then it becomes a positive. Again, this is talking about that whole magical stuff. So I'm really, um, it might be a little bit confusing and it is for me, so I try to explain it the best that I can, but it is a really interesting process. So what we're gonna do is that I've already prepped my paper and I already have um, things set up and we're actually gonna take just a brief moment and we're gonna um, meet back up outside. Okay, so we are now on my front porch outside, so we might get some visits from my cats. They do like to butt in. And what you're seeing here on the camera is that I have a board. I have my paper that has been treated with those chemicals I showed you previously. I have negatives, both for my time in Italy, and then you might recognize uh, Hogwarts. Um, we have the Hogwarts castle, and then we have Green Guts with the dragon on top. Went to Universal, had a lot of fun there. We have some fern plants and then found objects. So I have some, which are just right over here. So I have some different creatures, couple um, octopi, some dinosaurs, little turtle, little lizard. So um, I'm just gonna let them expose. Now it is a very bright day, hence the sunglasses. So the exposure time actually doesn't take that long. It's probably been, what broke just about a minute yeah probably yeah. yeah so really not too long what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna let those just sit for um, maybe two three minutes in the Sun and you're already starting to see that paper change color and since I have this found object one there on the top I can actually pick up those little figures and peek and see how it is going and with the figures it's really just gonna be blue and white but with the negatives, you're actually gonna see some of that color difference if I exposed it long enough. So we'll be able to see that in just a moment. All right, now you might be asking yourself, what if I don't wanna deal with the chemicals? How can I do this myself? You can do it with just construction paper and found objects or plans. Now, a lot of construction paper is color fast. Um, so honestly with this, the cheaper construction paper you have, the better. And it's best if you can actually sit it out in the morning and just leave it. Just let it go for a while, forget about it, come back in the afternoon and pick up your paper. And what's gonna happen is that all of the surrounding paper that's not covered by an object will become faded. So you're gonna be able to make your own cyanotype or your own sun print with just construction paper. 
All right, so now what I'm gonna do, because it's been exposing for, I don't know, three or so minutes, maybe a little bit longer, I'm gonna peek and see how my little figurines are doing. So I think you guys can see this. See, you guys see the two different, like the oh. different colors? So, so part of my print is going to be white and then part of it is gonna be colored. Now, just to make myself make sure that it's really gonna be a powerful print, I'm still gonna let that sun develop my print a little bit longer before I rinse it. Now, when I rinse it, I'm gonna actually have two different water baths because I'm not patient. And let me explain why. So with the two different baths, one is just going to be water, just plain water straight from the hose, nothing fancy. And then the second tub is actually gonna have hydrogen peroxide. And what this does is that it immediately develops your piece of paper. Now with this process, you can rinse it, let it dry, and in about 24 hours, it will fully develop. And that's where I don't have the patience. I wanna see exactly how my artwork turned out. So with the peroxide in a second wash, and all you need is just a squirt of it in there, it'll immediately develop that print so you can see what your bright blues are gonna be. Now, once I'm ready to take my prints off of, or out of the sun and develop them, I'm just gonna turn the camera so you can see the rinsing in real time with me. So for me, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of artwork that has not yet made it to the walls. So when you're doing this outside, today the wind isn't that strong, so it's kind of working for me. But I wanted to make sure that none of my objects are gonna move without me moving them. And that is challenging with animals, but thankfully they all are inside out of the sun. But that piece of glass is gonna make sure that no, like nothing's gonna shift until I want it to shift. And you will see that once I lift up this piece of glass, all of those little transparencies and the plants are actually going to move. So we'll start by developing the found objects and then we'll do each one together. All right, so we do have a new friend with us. We have T2, um, one of Brooke's co-workers. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to jump in and I'm going to start developing. So I have two different tubs. This white tub I'm going to use first. This is just my plain water. And then the black tub is the one that I put just a squirt of the hydrogen peroxide in there. So that way we can go. I do apologize for the shadow of my phone, but it is unfortunately necessary. So here I have all of my found objects. So I'm just gonna remove them and I'm gonna place it in the water. Now you can see that that's like an immediate reaction that my paper already looks a lot different. And I'm just gonna gently shake it back and forth and that gets the water running on the whole surface. And if you look in the center of that blob that used to be an octopus, it still looks a little bit yellow and green. And that's the chemical. So that, that initial color that you saw that is just washing off, but we still don't have a very bright, bright blue. So that's where we come in here with this tub. And look at how that color just immediately changes. Y'all see how bright that is? Oh, that, oh, that shadow is mean. There we go. Really, really bright blue. So it happens so quick. So normally I could wait 24 hours or just hydrogen peroxide and you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and develop those other images and we'll see how they look. Did I freeze? You did freeze. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so here, are my prints with the negatives. I'm gonna go ahead and get them in the back. And if you look at this, this is the one with the fern. So I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, I killed a bug, guys. Oh, snap. Uh oh. So there's a bug on my print as well. Nature, guys, it's fun. Makes it, <laughs> makes it interesting. All right, you guys, we're starting to see a dragon come through. start to see the prints come out. All right, I'm gonna say this one's ready for my peroxide bath. Looks cool. Yeah. Hogwarts looks a little bit cloudy, but I think that's, that's gonna be all right. Hogwarts is mysterious anyway. That's right. T2, 
T2 is purring really loud right now, by the way, so I don't know if you can hear it, but <laughs> she really likes cyanotype. <laughs> yeah, it's her favorite thing. <laughs> She's very interested. <laughs> All right, and here we have the, um, the fern. And with the fern, because it's not the thickest plant, some of the plant matter, except for where the poor bug happens, um, you're actually gonna see where it's a bit blue. So some elements are a lighter and a darker blue, and that's just because the sun was able to actually penetrate the leaves. So that's really interesting. That's cool. Oh, yeah, T2 had to see, okay. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. So that's doing a cyanotype. And like I said, this was just done on my front porch here at home. So you can order these supplies and do that, but you can also do it with construction paper. Make sure to check out the whole folder for different content of things that you can explore today during first Saturday family day. And we're so grateful that you were able to join us today. Have a great Saturday, bye.